Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Stalyansky in the 15 minute pool on ICC. Let's play E4 against Stalyansky. And maybe we'll have a nice Roy Lopez. Now, should I play the exchange variation? I think I will. I'm just uh, not as used to the Bishop A4 lines as I used to be. And I like this line for white, so I'll play it. Okay, let's go H3. And normally they play H5. Idea being that if I take, he takes. If I take on e5, he has queen h4, so this is kind of a fishing pole idea. Uh, white does not want to capture on g4, so I'll go here and I'll put the bishop on e3 and then play knight bd2. I recall studying this line a while back, and by a while back I mean like 10 years ago. <laughs> so let's see how it pans out. This usually happens, there's a queen trade. And if I could, I'd like to get rid of my pawn, my double pawn with f4 and make him stay with these pawns. So bishop d6 does attempt to stop that for now. d2 is the proper place for this. Now, knight e7 is a good move because he's trying to bring the knight to g6. I recall a game of Shirov's where he played, I think in this exact position, rook fb1, with the idea of playing b4 and then a4 and, and eventually breaking through on the, on the queen side. Or binding the queen side. So that seems interesting. I might go for that. It seems weird to use this rook, but you might want that rook over there. Um, the, the A rook staying where it is in view of uh, the pawn advance idea. Okay, so knight g6. So he could jump into f4 or h4, more likely h4. And at the moment, I don't mind, but he might go knight h4 and then h5 if given a chance. So let's just proceed with our plan. While I have a moment, I'm going to look up his stats. So he has a peak 15 minute rating of 2161, achieved recently, uh, close to 515 minute games. That's his main time control. So he has more 15 minute games than any other time control. So b4 is useful. We stake out space on the queen side. It's a minority attack of sorts. And we also are just restricting his, his pawns. A lot of times white brings their king to the center, so like king f1 to e2. So I might be looking to do that. For the moment though, just a4, knight c4, and then assess the position. If my knight comes to c4, uh, maybe knight a5 becomes possible to attack this pawn. I think I'd like to throw in king f1 somewhere too, because if knight c4 and my king is still on g1, then this could be annoying, knight h4. So I may not want to allow that. So like now would be an opportune moment for king f1. Just wondering if he's going to do something funky with f5 soon. Can I play a4 first, and then... Uh, let's play king f1 first. I think this is all right. It's just so useful to have king e2 at the ready if I ever want to divert my knight and not have my knight defending my f3 pawn. He could post a rook on f8 and try to go for f5. It seems like what he's doing. Maybe I play king e2 now. Idea f5, swing the rook over to g1. Yeah, that looks awkward for him. Hmm. It may force him to spend a tempo... Um, guarding his g7 pawn, like maybe something prophylactic like rook h7. In the event that he plays f5, f4 sometime, it's not out of the question that I could play bishop c5, especially if I have a knight posted on c4 already. I could do that in hopes of him capturing and me having instant pressure down on the b7 point.
Those of you who watch my channel regularly have probably figured out that I really like end games. I just enjoy playing end games for some reason. Um, I never, I, when I was growing up, it, I wasn't like that necessarily. But um, as I've gotten better and better, uh, for some reason, the end game has emerged as like one of my stronger points. And I just enjoy the process of playing them and studying them. I'm not like Alf Anderson or anything, but I do okay. Hence, I play like Exchange Kings Indian, uh, this line of the Roy Lopez. I don't play Exchange Slav or I don't play like Exchange every line, but there are certain lines that I'll gladly go into an endgame. Works well in fast time controls. It's a good way to control the pace of the game. Okay, so he saw what I was up to with Rook G1. So knight E7, I think clearly he wants to go F5. That's what his entire position is built up for. So now, do I want to go knight C4? Knight C4, I'm a little concerned he might play B5. I think I should play A4. And then if F5, maybe, maybe even A5 then. That would be interesting. Okay, let's start with a4. Just curious how he's going to react to that. So if we play a4 and he goes f5, as he just did. a5 is a tempting move. Because if I play knight c4, this b5 retort might be okay. Well, then again. Hmm. Let's say knight c4. If b5, maybe take, he takes with his pawn, I can play knight takes d6. And then if cd, I'm coming into a7 with check. That somehow seems good for me. King e6, rook g1, let's say. Something along those lines. What if knight c4, f4, then bishop c5? I don't really have a threat per se, though. But he can't play like b6, for instance, because I can take on d6 and then grab b6. So it might prove unpleasant for him. So I'm debating between like knight c4, a5, and possibly b5. Although b5, I think I can just discard because of f4. Uh, I don't really like the look of my bishop running out of squares like that. So knight c4 or a5. a5 is more restrictive, and it shuts down the b5 idea. That's what I don't like about it, necessarily. I think knight c4 would be the way to go. Yeah, let's do this move. And if f4, I'll have a choice. I mean, in addition to bishop c5, I could also play bishop d2, maybe come to c3. It's a strong consideration as well. So again, that line I was discussing a moment ago with b5. So b5, a takes b5, a takes b5, knight takes d6, c takes d6. I think he'd like to play. Let's say rook a7, check, king e6. It feels like I should be better with my active rooks. Um, like I can send this one over to g1. But I don't know. He's got a compact formation. It's not clear that my bishop is better than his knight. So he might ultimately decide that b5 is the way to go. It wouldn't surprise me. I could play after b5. I could take... A takes and then knight a5, maybe. And then if f4, bishop d2. It's not as direct as I would like, though. b5 is on the agenda if I'm able to play it. Because then, if I can get a rook into b5 after a double exchange, I'll be attacking his b7 and e5 pawns. I 
I have this feeling he's going to play b5. I've been right about my feelings so far this game. <laughs> so I have a feeling he's going to do this. b5, a, b, a, b. Knight takes d6, c takes d6. Maybe rook a7 shouldn't be played, but it's such a natural move. Rook a7 check, king e6. Let's say rook g1 then. And maybe rook f7. I wonder if I have anything with taking on f5. Probably not. The annoying thing is if I take his bishop, my, my bishop no longer has access to c5. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pre-move a takes b5. So it's, a, it's a virtual guarantee that I take if he plays b5. Every second can count in these games, right? <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't consider moving the knight anywhere. I could play knight a5, but what's the point? I'm going to be taking on b5 sooner or later. Okay, so no b5. So this is a move, I guess, just designed to defend the g-pawn. Now I can consider playing b5 myself, as I said I would. Bishop c5 is also possible. Bishop c5 carries no threat, though. I think b5 would be the, the direct move, and if I don't play that, I don't know what I'm achieving. Maybe b5, and let's say a takes b5, a takes b5. Uh, let's say he plays f4 then. If I take on c6 with check, he's going to take with a knight. So maybe bishop d2. C takes b5, rook takes b5. Yeah, there's this annoying attack here and also on e5. I think I'm, I'm going to go for this. It's what I built up my position to achieve, and he's showing a lot of play on the king side, and he's marshaled his forces on this wing too. So I don't really like restricted measures like a5 as much. Let's pre-move a capture again. If he captures once, like a takes b5, a takes b5, and then plays c5, I think I have a couple good options. One being just b6 before he gets a chance to b play b6. Also, rook a7 looks pretty good, attacking the b-pawn, because if he plays b6, I would have knight takes b6 check, and he's pinned along the 7th rank. I think his best chances for counterplay are probably connected with trying to bring his knight to c6 in conjunction with an f4 move. But I'm not sure he can pull that off without weakening b7 and e5. I mean, e5 is already weak. I guess I shouldn't say weakening e5, but b7 especially. And if my rook gets to b5, which will happen if he wants to get his knight to c6, then I'm hitting e5 a couple times. Rook g8 seems suspicious to me. That was... Too slow, in my opinion. Maybe what he should do here is take once with the A pawn. So A takes B5, A takes B5, and then play just Rook A8 and admit that he's not going to be doing much on the king side. Well, he took with a C pawn, which I do not mind seeing. Okay, so now 
Is there any benefit to taking on d6 right away? I don't think so. This is a bad bishop. So let's play rook takes. I'm hitting b7. If king c6, probably just double up the rooks. I attack b7 again, and knight takes e5 is on deck. Okay, b6. So I can just take on e5 now, can't I? I could also play a move to try to increase the pressure, like rook a7. Rook a7, he has king c6, though. Yeah, I don't know if it's necessary to speculate with that move. Knight takes e5, just straight up wins a pawn for us. Knight takes d6, he'll take with the king. That doesn't seem to lead anywhere. Bishop takes b6 is interesting too. I was looking at that for a moment. Bishop takes b6, uh, c takes b6, rook a7 check, and if he runs to, to c6, I have rook takes b6 check, followed by taking his bishop at the very least. Again, I don't know. I'm not sure about this. Like, bishop takes b6, maybe king c6. Hmm. Or rook b8. Rook b8, maybe I can take on d6. Mm, hard to say. I prefer to win like one of the C or B pawns rather than the E pawn. That's why I'm not just immediately playing knight takes E5. Concern that bishop takes B6 is a little flashy though. <laughs> like bishop takes, C takes, rook A7 check, king E6. Uh, rook takes B6, rook D8. I'm sure I have good play there, but I don't see immediately how I win the material back. Hmm. All right, let's just bank the pawn. Check. I think he's going to take. Could move the king, but that's fine by me. I'll move my knight back to c4 probably. So after he takes and I take, if knight c6, I have rook d5, or even rook takes f5 if I want. He can move his king somewhere, uh, like king d6, for instance. Not sure that's desirable, though. King d6, I always can play rook b5. Maybe d4 is also decent. If f4, probably bishop d2. Yeah, bishop d2. d4 is a little weak, but I can cover that. My bishop might be bound for c3. And if f4, his h5 pawn is weak, he'll have to tend to that. He'd probably have to follow f4 with g5, but then I get rook g1 in, and g5 is fragile as well. So it's looking good. If he takes on e4, I'll take with my f pawn to undouble. Now let's pre-move that. Okay, he plays f4 instead. Okay, so I mentioned bishop d2. Bishop d4 is the alternative. Don't know why I'd want to leave him within distance of forking me, though. I know I have rook d5, but it seems unnecessary. Okay, so we'll just bring this back. This is a weak pawn. He might have to play g6. If g6, I wonder if bishop b4 is just good. And then if c5, I have rook a7 coming in. 
skewering him on the seventh rank. He's got big coordination troubles. Okay, so if I take h5, his idea is knight d4, I believe. And he's forking my uh, f pawn and my c pawn. So maybe I throw in rook d5 and then play bishop c3, whereupon my bishop dominates his knight. Let's do that. Check. I don't think it's worth speculating about rook takes h5 again. Um, I feel like I've said that several times already this game. It's not worth speculating over. <laughs> c3 is another way to cover those weaknesses. c3 has the advantage that my bishop is aimed at uh, the f4 pawn. Also, I'm noticing I can just play rook g1 right here too. Anything wrong with that? Rook g1, he'd probably play g6, I'm guessing. Now let's do rook g1. I don't think I'm really going to get anything down the a file anymore. So we might as well assign the rook to the more useful square. So if g6, bishop c3 in preparation for coming over here, or c3. I sort of like c3 the more I look at it. Hmm, I'm torn though. C3, let's say knight e7, rook g5. This rook can't leave because I went f4. That should be good. Let's go c3. Is c3 knight e5 anything? No, nah, I don't think so. Let's go c3. I want to advance my pawns in the center anyways. So I'm preparing c3 and d4. And keep this bishop aimed at f4. I like the fact that I'm tying down both of his rooks to the f and the g pawns, respectively. So if knight e5, I could play d4 right away, or I could throw in rook g5. Mm. I'll probably play knight e5, d4, and then if knight c4, uh, rook D to G5. It's going that way with the knight. Well, now just rook here should win at least a pawn, right? Because I'm att attacking G6, and if he steps to the F-file to defend it, uh, I win the F4 pawn. And if rook G5, rook F6, I have rook takes H5. With the pin. Okay, so let's do this. Yeah, knight a5 didn't look like a good idea. The b3 square is kind of weak anyways. I could also play e5 right here. e5, I think I'll play rook f5. Rook takes h5 is pretty simple in this position. Looks good. Yeah, let's pull the trigger. Brings his knight in. Maybe d4. Mm, then he has rook a8, though. Maybe rook b5 is a way to simplify. He takes d2. Hmm, hmm, hmm.
looking at d4 again as well. d4, rook a8, though. You can play rook e5 check, maybe. Somehow that's not as clear as I'd prefer. Rook h6, rook a8, I take, he takes, takes. King here, I can come back, bring my rook to d1. I'm kind of tied down in that case, though. Maybe that's all right. Okay, I'm going to do this. It seems a little strange, but the point is, like, I want to, if, if this rook moves, I want to be able to take with the g rook to instantly threaten his rook, right? So... I'm thinking like take here, he takes, I take, king f7 will be played, and then I can go rook g1 and the rook back to d1. So let's do that. Check. It's passive, but I'm up like, what, three pawns now? Ah, he can do that. Didn't see that. Didn't see that at all. Yeah, and if I take, he has rook a2 check. That's too bad. All right, now we got to make it messy. <laughs> Go after his f4 pawn. Miscalculation by me. Check. Mm -hmm. Check. Let's give it a check. See where he goes with his king. This actually might still be pretty interesting. So if I check him here, and then king e3, nah, not liking that. Uh, I gotta make up some decision. Check. check again. Check. Okay, we'll do this. He's gonna go knight f1. And then we'll do this. You can check on a4. I have c4. Okay. Let's go h4. Check. Start advancing this pawn. Ah. Yeah, I'm running into 93. Yeah, check. 93 check. Check. Yep, now the wheels are coming off. And this is probably just losing. King e5, he can stay pretty close to his. Yeah, this is not good at all, guys. <laughs> I'm going to try to march my king up the board and shoulder his king out. Yeah, he's just winning that pawn, isn't he? Mm. Yep. Ah, that was poor technique. All right, I'm going to resign. Very poor technique by me down the stretch. Started with this um, knight into b3 idea. And I mean, I should have several ways to defuse it, but I chose the wrong one. Rook h6, rook a8, and then take here. Not good. Totally missed knight takes d2. I was only anticipating rook a2. Hmm. Yeah, he played well um, to convert that, actually. Um, granted, I did blunder. I didn't see the c5-93 idea either. Hmm. Let's take a look at it. This is an interesting game. So this bishop g4 line, yeah, white plays h3, h5, and then d3. And you can play this with knight bd2 as well. But I like putting the bishop on e3 and then getting the knight to d2 thereafter. So black takes the opportunity to exchange on f3 right now. Because um, if he doesn't, he might not have an opportunity to double my pawns. So this happened, and then bishop d6, stopping the f4 idea. Knight d2, 
97. And then this move is interesting. And it kind of proves useful. I mean, you saw in the game that I get to keep my rooks on the queen side. And it's nice that I have both b4 and a4 coming. So king d7, king f1. It's hard for black to know where to put the king. I mean, probably he made the right call, keeping it in the center. Um, king f1 is useful because, like I said, if ever I want to move my knight, it's nice not to have to worry about knight h4 attacking this pawn. It's nice to be able to just go right into e2. So king f1, rook here, king e2. So he could have played f5, but that would have ran into rook to g1. And I'm doing well. Like if rook f6 to defend the knight, then I can take, and I'm going to get at g7. So knight e7 and a4, f5, knight c4. Yeah, maybe like right around here, let's put the engine on and see. I feel like my play has been pretty strong up to this point. Yeah, knight c4. I didn't like that move by him. Or HGA, it just it somehow feels too slow to me. I was expecting b5. Which apparently is even worse, according to the computer. <laughs> Let's see. Take, take, take. This is the line I calculated. C takes D, rook a7, check. check. King here. Ah, and bishop g5. I didn't see the bishop g5 move. I was looking mainly at rook g1. But that's crucial, since I haven't um, had to deal with f4 yet. He hasn't blocked out my bishop entirely yet. Okay. And then rook f7, rook g1. He's under pressure. Yeah, this is a lot better situation than if f4 had been played and my bishop's locked in on d2. So he played rook g8 instead, and I went ahead and played b5. Surprised the way, the way he took. I thought he would take this way, and I was speculating that maybe rook a8 is the way to go. Guess even this is pretty good though. Check. Take. Uh huh. And if he takes with the knight, I can, I can take on a8 and grab the b7 pawn. Just winning material. So he took with a c pawn though, and then took here. Rook takes. B6 was played, and I thought about this move, but it doesn't really seem to be necessary, nor does it look like it's going to pan out. So was I looking at take and then check? Check. King e6. I guess he has bishop c7. Yeah. Not worth going into that when we have a free pawn check. available to be captured. Okay, so I'm plus two right now <laughs> with the time advantage, seemingly on my way to victory. Oh, bishop takes b6. Yeah, I didn't see that move. That's a nice one. And if c takes, then rook a7 can be Check. played. We win the knight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, tactical miss by me. And if he if he moves the knight too, like knight c6 or knight g6, I can check on d5 and then move the bishop. And I've just netted another pawn. So f4, uh, bishop d2. Here, check. I give it check. Oh, I can play d4 directly. Okay. Yeah, I don't have to waste time playing c3. That is a good point that the engine makes. And then, if this rook were to move, I would be threatening immediately d5. So king e6. What did I play? Rook g1, I think? This still worked out well, though. So I'm up a pawn, and I have pressure as well. c3. You know, it would have been nice to avoid c3, because c3 does weaken my second rank. So c3, knight a5. I thought he was going to go, what did I think he was going to play, knight e5? Trying to do something like this. But I guess, yeah, even bishop c1. And my king will have a convenient square on d3, and probably this rook goes to g5. Mm-hmm. So c3, net a5. I did this. All fine. Yeah, now I take... I knew I was going to win a pawn after rook g5, because like I said, if his king comes to the assistance of the g6 pawn, he loses f4. 
and that would be decisive. He's not coming back from that. Because the F4 pawn is like one of the, the few things he has going for him that cramps my king, also blocks my doubled F pawns. So here, maybe I shouldn't take on h5. d4 once again, okay. So that way I can move my king up to d3 or at least threaten to do so. Ah, uh, yeah, and also e5 is a threat. And if I force his rook to move, then I can take here. Now, I thought about um, e5 right away, but he does have rook f5. And I wasn't exactly sure. Check. Like if I if I trade on g6, he can Check. play king takes e5. White's still up a pawn, but it seemed like I had much cleaner ways than that. So I took on h5, he played knight b3. Now I did this. Let's see what the engine likes. Still likes that d4 move, rook h7. Hmm. Yeah, and that's just a big mistake. That's too bad. Because it looks like such a natural move. And I mean, I was bound to make this mistake. Because when I played rook h6, like I did it intending this move next. I had to find bishop e1. That's kind of a hard move to see. Rook h2 check. check and then hide the king. Like d1? Looks a little scary. But I guess he doesn't have any ways he can hurt me. And I'm defending f2. Check. He checks, I can walk my king out. Hmm. Yeah, so I took here, he Check. took king f7. Now I thought, okay, everything's good, because rook a2, I'm going to play rook d1. And then I can like slowly do this, and I'm going to win. <laughs> I'm up three pawns. Uh, but, surprise, surprise, yeah, knight takes d2. Completely missed that move. And the point is, if takes, he has rook check, check. and I'm forced to the back rank somewhere. He checks and wins my rook and wins the game. So I went for this, trying to eliminate check. his f-pawn. Check. I still was thinking like I might outplay him in the time scramble here, but Check. that proved to be um, not a realistic idea. King e3 right away. I saw Check. that. I saw I was probably going to lose the f-pawn now because he is threatening knight takes e4 discovery. So I have to move my king, and I saw that no matter what Check. I do, I'm going to lose the f2 pawn, in which case I still have three pawns. Okay, but I guess like it's having the escape square to f4 is pretty crucial. Take, and now what, d4? Just start rolling with our pawns. And if he plays some move to attack this f3 pawn, I have rook g3, okay. Knight f1, rook g1. Might be like heading for some sort of draw or something. Knight d2, what about this if that, if that happens? Rook h2. Hard to say who's playing for a win here, especially with the amount of time we have. I think a draw is actually a pretty fair result from this type of position. Um, yeah, I was, I was definitely a little bamboozled Check. at this point because I was disappointed that I had missed the knight takes d2 move. Check. These situations are hard in chess. You have to like readjust your thinking. Um, yeah, this was this was apparently bad. Check. You can do this. I saw that I could escape that way, but Check. maybe this is also good. Rook Check. Three. King c2, check. check, and then go in this pawn finally. Because now my structure is more compromised. I'm weak on the dark squares. But instead, he just took. Yeah, and I played a game losing blunder. So after taking, his threat is c5 followed by knight e3. And he can't do it right check. away because my pawn still exists and it guards the e3 square. So that's why he couldn't play the immediate c5. Check. Yeah. Check. And he gets this in. No, I give him credit. He, he still found some good moves towards the end right here. Um, the engine wants to go king d6. Okay, just staying by this pawn because he can clean up these three pawns pretty easily. I mean, there's like an outside chance I might be able to draw this position, but he played it like perfect. Um, he didn't waste time going after the h-pawn. The h-pawn is a goner, so he just coordinated his king and his rook against the c-pawn, which is the only pawn I can assist with my king, so... Yeah, and I resigned. Okay, yeah, these games are tough, because uh, you feel like you play a good game the whole time, and then, like, one mistake in time pressure just kills it.
That's a little tough to see. It's like a, a pretty common move order mistake, actually. The fact that I missed knight takes d2 and thought all along that the main threat was rook a2. In retrospect, I would have played d4 sooner. Yeah, like right um, either here or after this, just the, the d4 move. And that also guards the a5 square, so I don't have to block off my bishop. Seeing bishop takes b6 would have been nice, too. This is a very nice tactic that puts the nail in the coffin. Okay, uh, so hope you guys enjoyed this standard game, and I'll be back tomorrow with another one. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.